and welcome to a brand new episode of the Traction.gg podcast, where we talk about racing games, sim racing, and racing esports. I'm Tom, and joining us today is Yaroslav Honzik, aka Jardier. He is a YouTube content creator, as I'm sure you're already aware, with over, just now, 100,000 subscribers. In fact, as we were talking in this interview, he was waiting for the first person to deliver his YouTube plaque. He primarily covers Assetto Corsa Competizione, through competitive live races, but also some pre-made videos as well. He creates some funny and interesting tweets about motorsport and sim racing. And also he does cover from time to time other platforms like R Factor and iRacing as well. So I do recommend subscribing to him if you don't already. And if you do, what I hope this conversation will give you is some context to his background, not just how he started, because I think there are excellent podcasts out there already that cover that. The Gridfinder one or the one by Chris Hay, superb but his work ethic, his mentality, why he keeps going, how he learnt the skills to become a YouTuber. And then also with version 1.9 and the 2023 DLC just hitting for Assetto Corsa Competizione, I thought there'd be no one better to discuss whether they were positive updates, a good DLC pack, and what he'd like to see in the future of the platform. So without further ado, here's Jardier. So Jardier, pleasure to speak to you. How are you today? Hey, I'm Grutum, thank you very much. Thank you for having me, having me here. <laughs> no problem. Our our pleasure and our community's pleasure. Uh, thank you for being on the podcast. And so before we dive into some hot Assetto Corsa Competizione topics, I think congratulations are in order. Uh, a couple of months ago, or just under a month ago, maybe, uh, in March, you hit 100,000 YouTube subscribers. Yeah. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. What does that, what does that mean to you? I mean, uh, yeah, it's like a little achievement unlocked, you know, because for the past four years, I was always saying like, yeah, like 100,000, that would be really good, you know, because you get a little uh, plague, you know, from, the, uh, from yeah. the YouTube, you know, the silver button, you get uh, the verified on YouTube and it's like, you're like, yeah, I'm on a, like a little bit higher level now or stuff like that. But in reality, it doesn't matter, right? It's like, it's, it's just a number and uh, really it doesn't change anything for me in a way that I'm like, it's like, I don't know, getting a little promotion in the job that you get like more responsibility, but nothing else changed, you know? So I, I take it that way and it's fantastic. You know, like uh, <laughs> when I look my, at myself like four or five years ago, when I wanted to have at least like hundred uh, subscribers to at least have someone to check on my videos or something on my races. And now we are here. It's uh, crazy, crazy. Yeah, it's a, it's a great achievement. Uh, well done again. And also, uh, have you heard anything about the, the plaque? When does the silver button arrive? Today. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> That's the package uh, oh, I'm actually man. waiting for and uh, <laughs> it should arrive today, yeah. <laughs> so later in the episode, if there's a clear edit point, it's because the silver the, the silver award has arrived from YouTube. <laughs> that's amazing timing. Well, so I guess though, that's that's one target achieved. Mm -hmm. And I think your YouTube channel has been around for long, long, quite a while, but you've really started taking it seriously in the last four or five years, right? So mm -hmm. I guess, have you got a name of 200K now? Is that is that the next goal? Like, yeah, like obviously like I would like to keep growing. And uh, like, you know, when you look at Jimmy Broadband and Super GT and such, you're like, wow, it's possible, you know, it's achievable. Mm. Uh, I know I will probably never be able to do it because like I'm doing like 99% of the stuff I'm doing is streaming. So it's a little bit different to grow uh, compared to like doing just YouTube. So I'm like, I'm like, yeah, it would be nice, but at the same time, I don't care too much. I think the hundred K already for me is like, like, okay, I'm done. I'm happy. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, whatever happens now is like a bonus. You know, so I'm not like putting any pressure on myself or anything. I just want to put good content, good stream, and keep our community solid as it is right now, and everyone happy at the same time. You know. I think that's a definitely more realistic and achievable goal and something that uh, you clearly your feet are on the ground and it's actually more about yeah creating interesting and engaging content than ultimately the number although 100k is nice right but it's still okay let's try and make some entertaining videos and have a good time that's got to be the main aim right yeah yeah exactly as you said like for me it was like I was like, when I had 50,000 or 10,000, it was exactly the same goal, you know, still having the good community, make people laugh and enjoy their sim racing and racing. And, and at the same time, me being happy, enjoying the racing and yeah. having the great community. So like, literally, like, if, if I if I look at it back, 
nothing literally changed from me having thousand subscribers until this point except maybe having a little better equipment and a little better background but otherwise literally nothing changed for me so i just want to keep going as as long as i can and who knows what's gonna bring you know if i will be in 10 years having 103,000 subscribers i'm gonna be completely fine you know <laughs> okay well that's good and also still the same person as well which is the main thing right and it's uh, there's a lot of work, a lot of effort, and I'm sure there is a lot of stress still uh, involved mm -hmm. behind the the fun and entertainment. Uh, but it's still it's still a pretty good day job, right? Yeah, yeah, like <laughs> it's a dream, you know. Like uh, I'm doing sim racing my little whole life, you know. I started sim racing online or racing online in 2004, so literally for almost 20 years now doing online racing. Now like on and off, but for the past four or five years, like literally almost every single day and. Uh, I think the way I approach it, it really helps me because I, I take it as a... When I'm online, when I'm streaming, when I'm racing, it's my hobby. And when I'm off the stream, I take it as a work. Right. And it really helps me to find like a kind of peace in, in, in a way, you know? I'm also, I in the past four years, I learned how to like avoid the burnout or like keep with the burnout as well because mm. it happens in every single job, including this, you know? And uh, I feel like I find like a good peace in this. And I think I'm like, I'm... Yeah, I would say you have a bad day as everybody else, a bad month and so on. But I feel like I, I found like a good rhythm and good balance right now for me that really, really works. And I'm very happy with that. One element I have the utmost respect for you and some other YouTubers as well is being able to stay entertaining and talk and be focused in the race at the same time <laughs> and do that for like six, seven hours. And then the next day, do another stream. There might be another four hours or something. You know, how, how have you, uh, I guess over time you've learnt the skills um, to be able to do that and also still keep the enjoyment. I guess, what what's the key to staying focused when you're streaming for so long? Trying to stay on the track, but also read the chat at the same time. I'm going to be honest, I have no idea like how it <laughs> comes together because like literally from my first ever stream, it came just like clicked, you know, and... Right. Like, my biggest problem now is doing it other way around. Like, when I have to practice for something and I have my no stream, no chat, I have a problem being focused and, like, not get, like, not bored, but, like, enjoy it. So I, I would say, like, the chat and the whole stream itself, like, just talking. You know, I just have to talk with someone. So even when, I, when we do some practice, I literally have to wait for my teammate to join me because I... I'm like, as you know me, you know, I'm a very talkative person. I like to talk a lot, you know, when there's a topic, I, I never shut up. And um, I, I feel like just this just comes like naturally for me right now that uh, I really am addicted to the stream itself or the, the talking with my yeah. community and the chat as well. So it comes naturally and literally like from day one, it literally just came together. And I think really, as you said, like the key for it, like I think it's my a bit of a long experience with driving, so I'm like very relaxed, right. and I don't have to think about the driving itself because it already comes with the with the natural like the, the the experience, and the, the muscle memory is there. So like my body does the rest, and my brain can focus on uh, my <laughs> chat uh, and talk about stuff, you know. So yeah, that's very it's very skillful though, because I certainly can't do that. I can drive okayish. And I sometimes could talk like we are now, but if I was trying to compete in some LFM race or something, it would be an absolute disaster. So I applaud you for, for doing that. And it's Thank interesting you. what you mentioned there as well, though, that the, the community helps you out because yes. it's nice to know that you're not alone and there's a whole, uh, yeah, sim racing. Sim racing is not a solo thing, really. It might seem like it from those mm -hmm. who aren't into it, but when you explore the community and read the comments and in, engage with fans, um, that, that helps you along. And, and I suppose it's just, extremely gratifying as well it must be for you to, to have people there to to lean on and get and get help with right especially if you're doing some practice for some serious races yeah yeah like for for me this is like very important because i i used to be playing like mmo games when i was younger and uh, right, the, okay. the 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 people are literally the most important it's the same when you have some certain job right when you have to depend on people and uh it's really really important to have like a good team around you right it's even in a racing as well um and for me, it's the same here. Like, I'm very happy, like, what kind of community we built and how everyone, how it's strong it is, first of all, and how amazing people are. And uh, and same goes with the teammates, you know, because I like to pick the, the people I have around me because I'm, like, I'm not young anymore and I'm, like, grumpy old guy that likes to, like, you know, like, I don't have a time for this, so I want to have this. So I'm, I kind of changed in this and... Uh, 
I'm a bit of a picky person, you know, now. And uh, it also helps. I think it very, very helps, yeah. you know, because I'm like, okay, I'm too old for dealing with this, you know. <laughs> I, I, you know, I want to deal with this. And, and, and luckily, the community is just great. So it helps, helps a lot, yeah. Yeah, if you if you think you're old, we're we're all screwed. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I won't mention uh, Ross's age. Uh, he's an attraction <laughs> member. Anyway, I digress. That's bit harsh. Uh, are you going to be streaming later today? Uh, I'm not sure yet, thing? actually, today no. because I had an eight-hour stream yesterday. Yeah, right. Uh, I was like Need testing the off. new stuff from ACC. I wanted to like get into it because we had the new update, right? So I wanted to get in, into it a yeah. bit, and uh, I need to do some recordings today as well, and. Uh, prepare some stuff for the weekend and uh i, I really tried I, I was taking like a little bit of break from videos now for like almost one and one and a half month because yeah. i was streaming a lot yeah. and now i basically got it back a bit you know uh, so okay. i'm trying to, to 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 do some videos and recordings in the background because i have for example like two cockpits here that needs to get built you know and i ah, haven't done it okay week. so yeah so uh well, there might be I'm some not sure if videos i will stream today i'm 100 percent streaming tomorrow but i'm not sure today yet uh, okay well I, was, I suppose I was asking because how how do you decide what you're going to stream and when you're going to stream? What do you have a process? Uh, well, I create like every month at the beginning. I create a schedule for the month. Then yeah. when I type like all the esport endurance, uh, the big races I sign up for, I try to have like at least two, almost three league races per per week, or like at least like one, let's say esport endurance or something like that, right, league right, race right. and something. And so they basically built the schedule itself. It's like I really like how I like work around this. And then obviously, if I have a day off, I either try to or want to do a video or uh, put some daily stream or something. And thanks to LFM, for example, ACC is very easy to do right now. Yeah. So that will really help. Or we do something with the community. It really depends. Like so, I see. So you've got yeah. your main main races that you're competing in that you're down mm -hmm. the leagues or the championships. Yeah, like PESC All Stars or yeah, 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 LFM yeah. Pro Series or whatever, and then okay, what else am I going to do in between? Exactly, yeah, that's, exactly. That's probably exactly. the best way of doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I know, I know, like I have like I don't know, thirty days, and then in eighteen days I have like as you said, All Stars. We have some SRO coming up, uh, Alpine Esport, LFM Pro Series, and so on. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, I have like two days per week free. So either I sign up for some league, or I take one day off, and the second one I do some big stream in LFM Daily, for example, and so on. Yeah. Well, you mentioned Alpine Esports. We'll we'll circle back to that in a few minutes time and I do I would like to speak to you about that because uh, there's a lot to go through there but uh, in terms of you being able to stream and then also edit videos and create thumbnails and write descriptions and think of the titles and stuff mm -hmm. you know how how have you learned to do that is, uh, is that quite a steep learning curve to start with yeah so like Oof, well, we can talk days about this. <laughs> I will talk okay, to you. An abbreviated break. Short version. So, like many, many years ago, I wanted to like put some videos for my friends to watch my hot laps or stuff like that from the leaks. So I had to learn some basic editing. Uh, so I basically went on YouTube, check how to edit like a very simple video. Then I did the very same thing with the Photoshop because I wanted to know how to do stuff as, as the basics, yeah. you know. And I'm very, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm the smartest person in this, but I really like to, when I do something, I like to do it good. So I try to, I, I like to read, I like to learn stuff and such. So I bought a YouTube book, how to work with YouTube. I bought a Photoshop course, I wow. bought a, a Premiere Pro course, how to do editing and such. And even though if I do very basic things, you know, it's very nice to know what you can do and how to do stuff because I don't know, you can remove zit from your face, you know, and make you <laughs> a little bit more uh, better color, you know, better lightning and yeah. stuff like that. And 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 I feel like I feel like every single YouTuber or every person that want to try to go on YouTube, I think everybody needs to learn this stuff because like it's I think it's very important. And if you want to take it seriously, it's like this was like for me, like you have to do it, you know. Yeah, and... it's, a, it's a it's a key point, isn't it? Because there's one thing having like a personality or an interest in sim racing or being yeah. able to drive quickly. Yeah. You kind of need all three of those, and then you need to take the time, mm -hmm. which I don't think some people perhaps realize, yeah. to do the editing and the live streams and make sure you've got the right equipment and Photoshop the thumbnails. It's actually quite yeah. a, you have to be dedicated to that as well, right? Yeah, exactly. Like it's the same with the streaming as you mentioned. Like people think that you just like turn on camera and 
press the right. button, you know, but yeah, yeah. like there is so much things in the background that you have to like tweak and work. Yes, now it's like very easy. I turn on computer, turn on camera and press start. But at, like years before it was like days of work and uh, trying to figure out the right settings and and stuff like that you know the microphone doesn't work that doesn't work the camera is shaking and the internet is dropping down and stuff like yeah. that <laughs> so i feel like the self-education is like insanely important in this and i, I really like to i, I i'm actually, sometimes when i su see some like youtuber that doesn't do this I, I feel like okay you don't probably take it that seriously you know because yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to I prefer personally to really go hard on this, you know, because I think it's very important. I I fully agree, and it's uh, yeah, it's very easy looking from the outside looking in, but when you then understand and speak to people like yourself, mm -hmm. who have spent all the time to set everything up, mm -hmm. then you fully appreciate. Oh, okay, right. That's why not everybody can do it. If that makes sense. Have you ever uh, seen a boosted media list? How to turn everything on? Yeah, <laughs> uh, he, he once sent us to uh, Porsche All Star. He sent us like a list of the stuff he has to do before he actually can start recording. It was like like ten <laughs> minutes of things, you know. I was like, wow. <laughs> oh, I, I love boosted media. Uh, maybe uh, hopefully one day we can speak to him on here. But it's it's uh, I really admire the fact that also he produces really long videos and the uh -huh. detail he he provides. You think, oh well, it's an hour, a forty minute long video, but it's actually. You know, it's taken days, weeks, months yeah, to get yeah. get to that point, right? And it's similar with with you as well with the streaming. You've got all the equipment there. That's an investment. Uh, you have to learn it. It's mad. Yeah. But I just wanted to get some insight onto how you go about your job. But mm -hmm. also a main part of your role in life, let's say, is ACC, a set of calls, a competizione. You've got to really say it in a fake Italian, I think. Um, you're mainly known for that. Now I know you, you've done some stuff on our factor and mm -hmm. i racing a lot as well but what is it about acc in particular that's uh that sucks you in as your sort of main platform mm -hmm. if that makes sense i mean it's that's just a like, massive question by the way sorry that's yeah, like no, 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 it's, it, it, it's, it's like i think the game just like click it's very simple set like i i used to play air factor air factor 2 uh race room Acer corsa 1 project cars 2 project cars 1 i racing since 2009 like literally every single sim racing game that exists i played in the past 15 years and i always were missing something that would be like okay this is it you know this gives me the feeling of the yeah. of that i want because like i always uh always when i played something it was a great game or a great sim but it was always missing for me a little bit that or a little bit that and i don't know why the acc just clicked with me very well like i mean the release of the, the first six months were absolutely terrible right when the game released like i think yeah. a lot of people are forgetting about it the the first six months were absolute pain i haven't actually played it at all almost and uh, and then when the game released after early access it's finally started like getting together but i think the the game just clicked with me very nicely because uh well first of all i love gd cars the g3 racing and overall like g g racing is was always my dream and it was always the top of my uh list of real racing you know and uh like some people are dreaming of formula one i'm dreaming of gt racing you know so <laughs> is that because you've watched some like gt1 racing when you're younger at most for yeah, example yeah 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 like i i watched the european le mans series in 2001 in out of the most i i was since 1999 i think to like 2006 i was almost every single fia gt race at brno yeah. uh my father drove uh, once as well at the fia gt race as well no way. And uh, obviously, because I was growing up at that time, at the time I was watching a lot of television, right? And I always was looking forward for Eurosport to have the LG Super Racing Weekend. Me too. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> With the world, tour world and European touring cars as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Formula like, Renault and such, yeah, such yeah, stuff yeah. like that. The Clio Cup and a uh, European Touring Car Championship with Zanardi, Prilo, and yeah, yeah, like yeah. That, you know, amazing. We used awesome. to watch it all. Yeah, 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 yeah. And obviously, always the motorsport TV. You know, I was watching like yeah. nonstop stuff like that. Oh man! And that even though I became a massive fan of Formula One, I just like the dream for me was always like GT, GT stuff. You know. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm very jealous that you got to see those cars live as well because oh, yeah. I never did. And then luckily, a couple of weeks ago, I was at Donington for some other work, oh. and there was a Lister Storm driving yeah. around, and, and it turns out it was Alex Brundle, and uh -huh. he was doing some test for it. And I, so I got to see one now. So since yeah, we last yeah. met and talked about GT1 cars, I've seen one in real life, fantastic. But that's amazing. Um, so I guess from that, yeah, natural extension is, okay, here's a GT-focused game yeah. uh, platform, et cetera, of course. It's based on the SRO series, so there's a load of cool GT3s and GT4s. So uh, obviously you've, you're best placed, I think, to 
talk about its evolution. You mm-hmm. mentioned there the early access phase, and then after that, you got into it. We're just talking now uh, about a week or so from a big update, version 1.9, which mm-hmm. tweaked the physics. And then also there was a DLC pack with uh, one track, Valencia, and three cars. Yeah. First, Firstly, did you have fun during the uh, live stream rev- community event, uh, content creator event the other day? Yeah, 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 100%, 100%. Like, I mean, as, as this is my main game that I like, you know, and play almost every day. Uh, waiting for almost 10 months or something was a long time to wait, you know, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, like we put the community together and we were like really not happy with the such a long wait. And finally, we got something back. And I think I think the community showed how important, first of all, we are. And the second of all, how much uh it was anticipated you know to get some changes and some update for acc and i mean the numbers were probably proving everything we were right. asking for you know so yeah brilliant i had a great day i was super happy i was super happy to show everyone and uh, i was super happy to try some stuff and uh, yeah yeah it's great yeah actually a colleague of mine john was in that race because i i uh i do mainly the writing whereas uh, <laughs> john does the driving and um there's actually i think during your stream that you were side by side for a bit so i'll, I'll send you a link later but it's uh, some uh, some good racing you had with him there nice mm-hmm. and clean um what do you think about the new physics so far uh i mean the curbs that's the hey, so far thing. so good like we are like the first impression was brilliant like the first impression we had the first two days basically or uh, right after the release and the preview event like was absolutely fantastic like brilliant from community from me from everyone like finally you know something uh now after a week we are like questioning some stuff with, with my teammates like obviously like, it's it's great like i don't want to ne- like be negative about yeah, it it's course. fantastic yeah. it's super super good now with the teammates where we go deep into the setups and trying to figure out like the correct way for because the sro is behind a corner you know we already had the first esport round at the monza yeah so we are like going deep into the setups now and we are like trying to like we are s- like trying to understand what works and what doesn't work and uh, it, it, i feel like now after a week I noticed in my team the the for the hype is going down a little bit where people are like, oh my god, I miss 1.8, you know, <laughs> and stuff like that. Well, uh, I think it's only natural when you start playing it for a lot amount of hours, a of long course. time. Yeah. And yeah, the, the sheen of the newness comes yeah, off yeah, and you yeah. have to work out the physics. So I'll be interesting to see how that over the next few months, you and your teammates yeah. like work through and discover new uh, <laughs> tweaks or quirks, let's say. Yeah. It's like basically like because like we had the 1.8 version for like almost a year yeah. so like there was nothing changing there was nothing different everybody knew like to the point exactly what is good what is bad and the only bad thing was the BOP otherwise like everything was already good right but now everything changed massively the tire and such so basically yeah. now you're not looking at the BOP but now you're looking like how to set up the car correctly how to make the tires last and and so on so uh yeah it's like Which I, I yeah, I really like it. I was like saying like yesterday on my stream that I'm like super hyped right now because I'm like like starting like a new game, you know, like for yeah, me, it's exactly. like almost like if you if you if I would download like Asset of course of two or something, and I'm like trying to discover what is different, you know, and how it what to do and what to do. And yesterday it was super fun on the stream because like yeah, we had like the tires died after like ten minutes. We were like, oh ah. my god, you know, what to do and so on. And uh so it's nice trying to discover the setup and everything, like the baby steps again of, of like yeah. almost a new game for me. Yeah. Do you have a favorite car of the new ones that have been added? So there was a Porsche and a Ferrari and a Lamborghini Evo too? Uh, I was super like I'm honestly we're excited about all three of cars for so long, but uh, right now the Porsche is my uh, my favorite. Like ah uh, yeah, I think my colleague Ross and John they they had a similar verdict. <laughs> they like them all, but yeah, the Porsches yeah, to yeah. go. It's like all <laughs> car cars are great, but the Porsche for me right now is like yeah. <laughs> nice, yeah, that's cool. And you, you know, I think you briefly mentioned it in our chat uh, just now, but also in your uh, video, not that's not a stream, but your video about explaining the new DLC and update. Mm-hmm. Um, you made a very good point about how the play accounts on Steam for the game mm. were like the highest they've been for a couple of years, mm-hmm. actually. And also bearing in mind that this update's not even on the consoles yet either. So mm. it shows that it, new content, I think, can do very well for this platform and new updates. So now yes. I think we need to touch upon the, the potential future. Now there's all yeah. sorts we can mention here. Let's just start with what's been confirmed. Uh-huh. And that is, are you looking forward to having a new category uh, in the GT2 cars? 
if it's going to be well done, then yes. Yeah, like you have to, as a player of ACC, you can obviously notice that some of the cars are not very popular in the game. And uh, for example, GT4 is like massively awesome, but not many people drive it because the BOP is very bad. Uh, okay. I think the reason why people don't drive it is because the BOP is very bad. But uh, I really hope the GT2 will be excellent in this point because I think if uh, it might be interesting, I think it definitely might be interesting. So I'm, I'm actually excited. Yeah, I hope they will bring it also with the new tracks. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see. I mean. Um, it's a completely different platform, but the KTM GT2, which is added to race room, I had a quick go on that, and that is a, mm -hmm. that's a bit of a beast, very different yeah. to drive. So the GT2 cars, I think, will be quite, yeah, just a, a, another fresh challenge, mm -hmm. in my opinion. But let's see how let's see how they they turn out and when they're going to yeah. be announced and all this. We just know that it's coming at some point. <laughs> um, so also this this recent pack came with uh, one new track. Now this is a this is a tricky question. So of all the SRO tracks in all their series that they run around the world there's actually quite a few that are not in a set of course of competition so you know if you had to pick one <laughs> what would it what what would you uh prefer to have in the game that's not there already it's so hard man it's like so yeah i've limited to say, you to yeah. one but you could yeah. because everyone wants all of them right <laughs> exactly but i think there's like so many two. like i mean if i would take all like 20 tracks that we have in asia america and europe yeah right like it, it is so hard to tell like i feel like if i would be answering for american part i would say like road america would be like mm. must have you know yeah, yeah right on the other side if i would be talking for europe i think the like portimao for example Oh, yeah, be, yeah. like we see the Valencia has like a very specific layout that is I would say comparable almost to Portimao in a way but obviously Portimao has much higher uh, yeah, attitude changes a flat a flat version of Portimao yeah. in reverse or something yeah 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 exactly and obviously like Sepang or uh, Twin Ring Motegi you know for Asia would be like Ooh, fantastic yeah. but I'm gonna say if I can pick one track I would yeah. <laughs> I would actually jump to the GT2 pack because I heard that GT2 is driving on a Red Bull ring uh, ah, okay, season. yeah. And I'm personally huge, huge fan of Red Bull Ring, because in yeah. any sim racing game I ever driven Red Bull Ring, it always brings amazing racing, because like obviously like the track is very simple, but because of that the racing is very close. You have a long straight, big hairpins, so it's easy to fight, easy to overtake, yeah. easy to follow, and I feel like the track would be like, uh, I honestly think the track would be absolutely fantastic in a game. Nice. Well, yeah, you mentioned there, uh, we've got an article which I'll link below on the Traction website, which is the list of all the SRO affiliated mm -hmm. tracks that are not in uh, ACC yet. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, it's in interesting. I didn't realize this until Ross compiled that article that the GT2 calendar has a couple of tracks that the GT3s don't visit. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dijon is one, which I would love to see. Yeah. I think that's a cool track in France. And then Red Bull's the other one. Yeah. So yeah, let's, let's hope it's something along the lines of that. Uh, yeah. If there is a track at all, that would be nice. I know it's very easy for some people to say, what about this, 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 yeah, this? Like... You have to like scan them, that costs money, you have to develop it, you have to program the AI, it has to work with the track limits and stuff. It's yeah, all sorts of complicated things, isn't it? But yeah, it would be nice to see uh, more, more tracks. I suppose then leading on from that, mm -hmm. we we were there at the uh, 24 Hours of Spa actually uh -huh. with uh, Fnatic uh, last last year. Yeah, yeah. It was last year, was it? I'm so, yeah, yeah. I'm so busy. Um, <laughs> And so while we were there, there was a nice surprise because uh, the co-founder of Kunos, Marco Masaruto, was doing some sort of speech, which we didn't really know about, uh, with Stefan Rattel. And it was all a bit of a surprise. And he said, oh, go on, we're going to do GT2 then. And it was kind of like a, oh, surprise. But, it, but he, he mentioned there, and it might have changed since, that the GT2 pack might be the last pack to say goodbye. Uh, and as we know, I think Kunos is working on some other projects for mm -hmm. next year and onwards. So do you think the popularity of this recent update and DLC uh, verifies the, the want for even more content after GT2s, let's say into 2024 and 2025? Is that something you'd like to see? I mean, hey, like I, I, I love, like I always say, I love ACC so much. And every time I said something negative about it, I was always saying that's because I love the game so much. I want it to be right. better. You it's know? constructive feedback. Yes, I want to yeah. be better. I want this game to be better. I want this to improve, this to fix, and so on. But as you said, like the the they are a small studio, right? So it's very hard to say what they can do and what they are also working on yeah. and stuff like that. And at the same time, obviously, it's official GT World Challenge game, right? We still don't have all the tracks from GT World Challenge, you know, and the cars, but it is official GT World Challenge game, and. 
I think the recent update, personally for me, that showed that the game really needs to get these updates. I feel like if, if ACC were getting, at, let, let's say, every six months, they would get uh, two free new tracks, uh, maybe some new car, if possible, and give like a big update on the physics or like these BOP changes and so on, so on. You can just see how much it brings, you know, like it's crazy because the, the recent time they they had, the last time they had a peak player uh, hit on a Steam was in 2020, 2021, which mm. was when they uh, announced, I think it was like 1.8 version or 1.7 version or stuff like that. Like right, okay. it was actually, it was, I think it was BMW when we got BMW into the game. Uh, that was the end and, of 21. Yeah, with 1.8, yeah, I think. Yeah. And at the same time with the BMW, we got like a big physics change, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And before before I think it was 1.7 or something like that. And and then later obviously we got 1.8 version. And everybody just came to the game and tried to and check check it out and everything, you know. And uh like so far the feedback from this new update was tremendous from people. Like everybody liked it. And I feel like hitting two years later, hitting two and a half thousand more players. Yeah. yeah is yeah. showing that literally the community is there. We are here and just give us a little bit more, you know? And I feel like that's basically what I was talking about already in January when I made a forum post on ACC, where I was asking like for them to give us like information, give us roadmap, give us something that we can like hold and we yeah. know what's gonna happen. Because yeah. I, I don't think the ACC is a type of game that should be buried somewhere, you know? Okay. Because I think the game is very, it has good, it obviously has a potential, right? Like you can see a little update, put it on the number one or number two on a top selling games almost. And uh, they sold over a million copies already of the game as well, right? Yeah. So, or 1.5 million already or stuff like that. So I think, I think it's a shame that we are not, like, I don't wanna, sound ungrateful but i think it's a little bit shame that we are not getting a little bit more updates and more yeah. stuff more often but as said we don't know what's happening in the background right we don't know what's exactly. going on uh it's obviously it's very expensive to do a lot of things but at the same time i think i think we would deserve it you know i think because like it took a year for us to get one track right now you know since the last update when we got the USA DLC, it took yeah. literally almost a year when we got one track, which, okay, it's great, but at the same time, it's not like enough at the same time. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think, sorry, it's just, I think it shows the potential. I think it just shows the community is there. We are waiting with our wallets to, <laughs> to spend the money on a new stuff, you know? So yeah. uh, I think I wish someone at the Kuno site, I hope Marco is listening or watching and, and he's seeing these numbers and he's like, hey guys, we really need to do something about this, you know? <laughs> so where is the uh, American DLC pack two, you know, or stuff like that, yes. you know? So, oh, here's yeah. hoping that would be nice. Yeah, yeah so here, there we here's go. Here's the thing, like, I think, yeah, and you said it and you're very clear there, it's not ungratefulness. It comes from passion and yes. want. And, and we don't know the numbers behind the scenes, right? But let's say we hope that recent DLC sold well enough to then... Yeah, yeah. Okay, we know there's GT2 coming, so there's going to be another one th mm -hmm. this year. But let's hope that also sells well enough to then go, well, okay, yeah. it's it's so successful, we cannot not yeah. invest somehow some extra mm -hmm. time. But as we say, we know publicly there is something from Kunos, a new platform in some form for Spring yeah. 24. And who knows that might come out and it might be even even greater and amazing and then we yeah, don't have to yeah. have that conversation so exactly yeah let's see like if the future is uh unknown but i'm sure <laughs> we'll know soon sooner rather than later so yeah it would be great if they would told us you know it would be great to, yeah, yeah. to get some information you know like it's uh was like in a rent sport and such is like we know some things you know and well yeah and uh, I think the communication between the developers and the community, like especially in sim racing, I think should be a little bit better overall. I'm not talking about right. only ACC, but I think like okay. this, the sim community is very small, but at the same time, it's massively strong, you know, because like yeah. obviously like sim racing, like very average vocal. age of the sim racer is like 25, you know, like let's be honest. So we are uh, working, we have a little bit more money than like yeah. 10 year old kid that's play Fortnite, for example. Exactly. And so I feel like the, they should Plus, really communicate a little bit better. I, I, I'm not talking about ACC, like everyone should communicate yeah. a little bit better yeah, yeah. because like the community is so strong and so good in sim racing that not only we deserve it as a community, but at the same time, I think it would really help them as, at the same time. Yeah, that's a very good point um, because this, like you mentioned there, the average sim racer does have some disposable income yes. and they have, they're old enough to have professional careers. So they're also, wise enough to be on forums and discord threads and research stuff all the time and discuss things mm -hmm. in comments so 
that, that I mean, it does take a lot of work to appease everybody, but you're right. Yeah, <laughs> some uh, communication might might help. Uh, and actually, speaking of community, I think I think in my opinion, you might disagree or agree. Let's see. What is is one of the reasons it is so popular and continues to be popular. Let's say, obviously, it has spikes with updates, but it's also there's a a permanent base of people who are continuing playing it is services like no food motorsports and sim grid mm-hmm. racing gp and grid finder etc so first of all do you enjoy you know is that those services have they extended the life of the game for you outside of what it shipped with and uh, second of all, do you think that you know would it uh, be popular without those I think, uh, like, for me, it would be still the same. Like, okay. I mean, like, I had some comment recently when a person would be like, if without LFM, you wouldn't be here. I was like, or uh, you probably uh, haven't okay. watched my channel for the past four years, you know, because <laughs> well, yeah. I'm, I'm literally on LFM for a year. <laughs> and the only thing that LFM, like, made for me was easier stuff. You know, like, be- right, before okay. we were doing leagues, before we were doing community races almost all the time. So and it, it already just existed, you away. just made it easier. Yeah, right. it just made it easier in a way because I'm like, hey, I can drive in 4 p.m. Easy, you know, like, I can do a race and I have content done, you know, basically. But I, in terms of saving the game or, like, survive, like making this, uh, I 100% am sure that LFM brought way more players into the game. Right. Like, because, the, like, the iRacing system works, everybody knows it, and everybody can confirm that it's the best system in the sim racing all over, right? And that basically LFM replicates basics of it, and almost the same way, and I think it works really, really well. And 100% it brought a little bit more players, and 100% it's keeping the game, I wouldn't say alive, I think the game would go f- still the same. Maybe okay. a little bit lower numbers, let's say, but I wouldn't yeah. be calling it dead or something like that. And it for sure helped. But at the same time, the LFM kind of hurt the other parts of the of the of the ACC because before you had like very strong leak communities. You know, mm. you had like uh, big pl- big websites like I don't want to name them, but you had platforms when they had like a uh, league racing on a weekly basics. And I would say a lot of those got way less players now because like it's so much easier to go out of them you know it's so much right, easier right, right yeah you have the report system you have the steward stewarding as well so, so like it's like a yeah it's like a balance there but i think in every single aspect personally if i look back i 100 percent like i love lfm and yeah. i'm super happy for them and i think it's also great that they are it's in the hands of not ace developers not acc you know i, I think it's kind of nice that it's like in a different hands Mm. It's basically the community holds it, you know, and I think it's very, very good. So, yeah, I think it was literally the best thing that happened for ACC for sure. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm curious about how it's going to work in the future as well, you know. Yeah, let's see. That's the that's the key thing, because, you know, further down the line in other projects, what if Kudos has systems like that built in? Where yeah. does LFM still sit? You know, it's a bit of a risky strategy, but for now, yeah. wonderful. And it. Provides excellent content for me to watch and races to yeah yeah yeah, to enter yeah easily so but wonderful. Uh, speaking of races, then uh, on a more well LFM serious, but on an extra extra serious level like SRO esports, are you, are you watching it? And did you watch the first Simpro series round? I watched the first one. Yeah, yeah, I watched. What did you think about that uh, championship? I was terrible. <laughs> the, ah! first race, the first race was uh, no, like no, no, like I'm, I'm doing Monster sprint. Turn yeah, I'm doing sprint and I'm doing endurance and uh, my teammates. Oh, you did doing, both this year. Okay. Yeah, my teammates are doing this. And um, when I watched the first race, I was like, oh my god, you know, like I, I don't know, like uh, like first of all, it was weird to see like six AMGs in a half a second or four well, times faster than everything else. Yeah, but to be fair, those drivers are really good, right? Yeah, but absolutely, still, and it could still. be track specific as well, right? I think I got spoiled. I'm gonna be honest. I think I got spoiled because I was watching Rensport recently, and they get literally they had like yeah small field, they have fixed setup, but but the, they had like literally a tenth across the top ten drivers. Yeah, so well, I was like, setup makes it easier. I think. Yeah. yeah, 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 it makes it easier. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna see the same, and then I saw like I don't know. 11 person was almost a second <laughs> off i was like oh damn you know and then i saw all the crashes and you, you know like okay monza first corner crashes happen yeah, right? yeah 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 so i was like kind of expecting that but then there was like some guy rejoining into other cars and and people crashing each other like i was like oh my god so i really hope the next race will be better you know <laughs> honestly well yeah that, it could it could just be monza it could yeah, be just yeah, people yeah, getting yeah, used to the sure. new update as well so let's That's hope for the next well. one yeah, yeah yeah it's like i mean it was brutal it was like it looked like a bottle royale but obviously at the same time was really nice the production was great 
Uh, yeah, exactly, the, yeah. the insights and everything, the background was right to have the drivers on the podium to get the interviews as well. Yeah. So you see the esport drivers, you know, because you usually don't see much of the ACC. So it's very nice to see those guys getting the uh, the, yeah, the trophy the on the podium yeah, at the, the race. The trophy yeah. and everything. And I think it's very deserved. And it's obviously amazing to, to see them perform so well. But I really hope it's going to be a little bit better next <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah, here's hoping the next round is a bit more tidy. Uh, what, so, what are your, you just alluded to it there, but what are your esports puns for the year? Uh, well, uh, I'm doing the SRO, obviously. We are doing the endurance uh, with my teammates and uh, we are doing the the sprint as well. But yep. I'm not sure how, I, how I'll take it because I, I really wanted to qualify, I really wanted to do it, but at the same time I'm like, I'm not anymore that hardcore eSport player as right, I okay. used to be. So for me it's like, I have to, because the work I do, at the same time I need to find like a good balance between it. Yeah, so like, I don't know, 10 years ago I was able to spend 8 hours per day practicing and hot lapping and working on the setup, but now I, I can't, you know, so either I'm relying on my teammates to help with the setup or I just yep. have to like have a little bit less hours. So I personally don't have any aim for like results. You know, I really don't. Uh, in endurance, we are doing, uh, we are in a silver class because I'm driving with my teammates who are silver and I definitely want to win that. Like that's mm. definitely a target yeah, yeah, in SRO yeah. to win the silver. That includes I, the 24 hours of spa, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in terms of the other stuff, I just want to do good. You know, I just want to do the best. I always, yeah. I'm very critical of myself. So obviously I want to do with the amount of uh, amount of practice and possibilities I have, I want to do the best possible result that I will be able to say, okay, even if I finish P10, I'm going to be like, I did a f good job, you know? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. You know, I want to be like, I'm so critical of myself that I know what my abilities are, or what I'm capable of. So I can tell like, if I get P1, I'm like, okay, I didn't deserve this P1 because it was too easy. Or right. if I get like P5, I'm going to be like, oh my God, yes, this was it. You know, this was so good, you know? So, yeah. I I mean, the field you're up against is super, super strong. Of course. So I, I might, you know, I know you want to do well, but also don't forget to have some fun as well and some good clean battle. Exactly, that's the most important for me. Yeah, yeah. But I'm glad that you're doing both um, of the SRO eSports series. You're also doing the Alpine eSports series, which I think, is that correct? <laughs> yeah, I saw yeah, that yeah, yeah. we've published an article about the entry list. <laughs> Again, there's a strong lineup there, Baldwin, Page, uh, some good ones. Um, yeah, yeah. But obviously you were a former champion of this, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No pressure. I, I yeah, expect. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I uh, it was so hard to qualify even for this because that was like really hard to qualify. But I was like, okay, I want to at least try to qualify and see if I can even make it on a list. And I'm and, and now I'm like on a list. The race is tomorrow. I haven't done a single up yet. <laughs> and, oh, uh, well, I'm taking up your time. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like you know. I, I know. Like when I watch the guys like Boita Fiala and uh, Luke Whitehead and James Baldwin there, I, I know I'm not beat them, but I know that I will have. I want to approach it a little bit differently. This Alpine esports thing. I want to approach it in a like having good content and having like okay. having ha being a one guy on the grid that will actually have fun. You know, right, instead okay. of like sweating and being like hardcore, I want to be like, ha ha guys, let's go, you know, let's do this, you know, <laughs> we got P20, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, so I want to approach it a little bit differently, yeah, you know, I want to be just nice. a nice looking guy on the field, you know, with the camera and then just having good fun, good time, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, if you, if you, if you make some good moves and overtakes or you get some good results, <laughs> a secondary aim, I think, should be if you're mentioned in the traction race reports, if you've done something notable. <laughs> Your name is in there, because uh, we'll we'll be doing those for those that series. Um, but anyway, Alpine esports is one thing. But because you were uh, champion a couple of years ago, recently there is a video on YouTube channel which I'm sure everyone's watched. But I just wanted to ask you again, you know, what's it like to do the the real world GT4 test for Alpine? I know you've also driven a, a Porsche Cayman around Most as well. So, how was the recent experience at Manicor? Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. Good. Uh, uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. You know, like. Um, so this was my, after about 15 years, this was my first time I was actually able to drive properly on the track. Okay. I mean, right. obviously compared to James, because I have like zero experience compared to him in the past 16 years, I was I was always having instructor, you know, next to me, uh, just sitting there. That's why I was telling in the video to everyone, like, if you want to try to make it, just go to the Alpine Esport and try to win it because the price is so worth it. It's unbelievable, you know, like the... 
Obviously, the similarities to the game are there, but the real thing is just so incredibly unbelievable. Right. And I, I was having the best day of my life. I wish uh, I could have done two more, <laughs> two more days or two more sessions or stuff like that. That's the problem we were saying with James, you know, like the, the, the price or the driving was so amazing. But the problem is like you don't have a budget and you know that yeah, yeah. nothing is happening in the next month or next week or next year. So <laughs> And one side we were the happiest kids ever and at the same time we were like oh guys it's over <laughs> you know yeah. but uh yeah i i just i have no words like the the car everything was just so incredibly amazing and uh obviously everyone was very very nice for me personally the best thing ever was uh having james there with me right yeah. i think if i would have someone who never driven a car there it would be a little bit different but because you have someone like james there who's like second in a british gt championship you know like world fastest gamer and he's like proven not only in sim racing but absolutely proven that he can be top driver in a gt racing you know or overall racing for me that was so so good you know i think i learned in 30 minutes more than i learned in 15 years like honestly wow okay that's impressive and i think it was really good for you to bring along your followers and communities and subscribers to that experience but it yeah. also begs the question now does it does it Give you the taste for more yes and how on earth what do you, you know how on earth do you get on track again <laughs> can i be Is honest what, yeah you can i Always. after alpine for a month i was in a deep depression ah, i no. if you watch my channel for a past month i haven't released yeah. a properly a video in a month except yeah, the alpine not... and like one video with the upcoming dlc yeah and i was having even problem like I'm, I'm trying to do gym and stuff and i was having problem with yep. eating and i was eating like pig you know for a month almost uh, i think i gained right. like three kilos as well and i was like wow. yeah i was like honestly i was very in depression because um i know it's like why right because like uh, you you got to drive a race car you know i was like yeah that's yeah. the best thing ever but, but what's the, next yeah, exactly. And, and people ask you, like a lot of people are by stream, everybody were like, guys, when are you going to race this car? You should be racing this car. And and I want to, obviously, but, uh, you know, like racing is all about money, right? Look at the James Baldwin. Right? Is. Look at yeah, James yeah. Baldwin. Like he's a champion, he's like, super young and everything, and you just can't race, you know? So I have some plans that I would like to achieve, uh, but it's all all about money, all about money, you know? Let's hope you get to 200k subscribers. That's some more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, maybe the, maybe the it's like is, a million. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. People think, oh, 100k thousand, 100k sub, you know, subscribers. You must be a billionaire. It's not quite how it works, is it? <laughs> and and racing is oh, it's ruinously expensive, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, and the whole business is set up for customers. You know, yeah. GT3s and GT4s. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. know there are some pro drivers that for Mercedes contracts, for example, mm -hmm. right? But they're one in ten thousand that's that's and literally like people i think what people yeah exactly i think that's what people don't realize like uh that yeah you know, like from every ten thousand real racing drivers you have like one who actually is yeah. doing it for money you know like who is uh, like let's say rafael marcello you know like that's the name i was gonna mention yeah exactly. you know like that's someone who does it for as a job but literally every single other person has to either bring their own money or they have their sponsors or something like that that's just like I was always saying, like, when I, maybe when I was a kid, I should have played chess or something a little bit more, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know football or something. But, cheapest uh, to get into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, well, man, same, like, yeah. like that, that sniff we had with the Alpine, like, it was just unbelievable. And also the this, the very same car we drove, they actually, it was driving in Monza now, the, in GD4, it was number 55 yep. car. It was exactly, it was literally the car we Oh, drove. that's chassis, right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I remember when we were at the Manicure, they were telling us, like, if if you crash it, we have a massive problem because ah, we don't okay. have a spare, we don't have a spare parts <laughs> mm. because like Alpine or something is like in a like ver like they don't have the spare parts basically. So if you crash, we can't race. You know? <laughs> so, so take it easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Goodness. Oh, well, yeah, listen. I'm sorry to hear that you're a bit down about it, but it, no, no, it was no, no, an amazing... no, no. I'm I'm good now. I'm good now. Okay, I, 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 let's I, I go. Woke up, I woke up. <laughs> it was just something in my head. Like, like it's very simple. I get you it. Know? Though. Listen, it's like very simple. I was racing for five years uh, in real life when i was a kid i was very fortunate yep. about it you know from 2001 2000 to 2006 and, and then search everything on your youtube stopped. channel you can yeah. find some bmw videos yeah 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 and then everything stopped you know so it was like 
I said money, you know, nothing was possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the whole life I'm trying to get back into the ray racing as well. And now I, I drove, I was very fortunate to drive the Lombo. I was very fortunate to drive the Porsche. Mm. And now the Alpine was like a proper, proper drive, you know, when they were like, okay, here we go, drive, a, you know, go a fast. Good number of laps. Or, yeah. you know, like you don't have to hot lap, but go fast and, and see how you do, you know? And, and obviously you're like, okay, I, I think I did like, okay. And, I want to do more, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. I, I hope you have a, you know an amazing year on on YouTube and stuff. But I hope you're <laughs> able to find uh, some other ways, other opportunities, or something something comes up. So I really do hope uh, for that. And uh, maybe you find some partners or something. But it's so it's so difficult to do that. And like course, we mentioned, yeah. James Baldwin there, and we've yeah. you know he's got a crowdfunding going um, because some rides were yanked at the last minute. So it is very <laughs> tricky out there. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Never give up. Yeah, exactly. I'm, That's I'm like sure I think in my whole up. life. I think in my life, you know, like I'm never giving up. Even if I'm gonna be fifty, I just wanna race, you know. So yeah, like my, my my father, he started racing when he was like fifty. You know? Right. And he raced from like fifty to sixty years old. Okay. Just, That's what I'm aiming for as well then. So yeah, like That's I mean it. it's like you have like yeah, I just I, I said, you know, I I, I just wanna do it and I will try to work my okay. way to it, you know. We'll be there in 20 years from now. <laughs> yeah. Doing some GT4 amateur championship <laughs> at the back. Old and fat and bald, but we'll be having a good time. So yeah. let's aim for that. Cool. Well, it's been a pleasure, Jack yeah. Daddy. Best of luck with everything. And just thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Thomas. Thank you, everyone listening as well. Thank you so much. Nice one. Cheers. Cheers. Well, thank you very much for listening to the latest Traction.gg podcast episode or watching it if you are watching it on YouTube. And if you are on YouTube, let us know in a comment below if you've got any future questions for Jardier because we might have a conversation again in the future. I'm sure we'll see him at some events around like we did uh, last year too. And if you're listening to the audio version of this podcast on Spotify or Apple, please do like, follow, rate, subscribe. That would really help us out. Another element is if you are watching on YouTube, just to remind you that we do have more regular podcast episodes in audio only form via your favorite podcast app, but we upload certain special ones to our YouTube channel as well. And subscribing there also helps us out. But that's it for now. We'll be back very soon on Spotify and Apple Podcasts with a new episode. And we might have some new YouTube podcasts as well coming up in the next few weeks. Keep it pinned. (music) 